If you're like me, you end up editing or on the computer all day, every day, it can get a bit tiresome and a bit fiddly being on the keyboard and on the mouse. So to have something more tangible in front of you to use that directly interacts with the computer, well, this is the Loop Deck Plus. In a way, this brings back the tangible feel of editing something. I've had this for a good few weeks now and I've used it every day almost. There was quite a bit of a steep learning curve to get used to how this all works and to customize it the way I wanted it to work. So you have all the functions you need that you would on Lightroom. So you have exposure, blacks, whites, shadows, highlights, but there is a bit of a steep learning curve with this and some of the customized buttons don't always work as expected. So I'll be going through the positives and drawbacks of the Loop Deck Plus. This is my usual setup for home editing. If you use the keyboard a lot for typing, then you may want to get an external keyboard to have by the side as you're reaching over the loop deck. And so you could accidentally press some buttons. And if we're doing lots of typing, it's not really convenient to do that. So here's a wedding that I captured. So how I would normally do it, I would just have my keyboard and mouse and I'll just use the side panel to make all the adjustments I wanted. So, so with the loop deck, it's kind of like having an arcade game. Back in the 80s, you know, it's all very tangible. You got your knobs, your buttons, and that's quite tangible and fun. And you do feel closer to the editing process than you would do just using a mouse and a keyboard. So if you wanted to just increase the exposure, it increases the exposure. The reaction time is a lot quicker than I thought it would be, actually. And you can see the develop settings there changing as you move the knob. And it is instantaneous, which is really impressive. If there was a delay, it would be really annoying. So what I've done, I pre-programmed my look on P1. So I press that and then it loads in my preset. Obviously it's not correct. So I adjust it to suit the scene. Get rid of the highlights a bit. Get rid of the temperature, add a bit of tone. As raise up the shadows. So as you can see, the, si the lighting situation on this is quite, as with all weddings, is quite difficult. The light is often behind them. So then what I would do, I'd use a mask. Now you can pre-program the loop desk to have masks. But I find it a bit tricky and difficult. And this is where the mouse again is needed. So I'd use the masking filter, select subject, and hopefully it will find the couple. And it has, and it automatically brighten them because that's the last preset I used and that's something that I would like that looks really good there I believe they say you don't need a mouse with this but I often find it's a lot better and again with cropping so I pre-programmed this button to crop brings up the crop option then I programmed that one to 10 by 8 because I mostly shoot and edit in 10 by 8 and I press to enter that Again, you're meant to use the control dial, do that, but I just find the button is really hard to press. It's quite a stiff button. So once I'm happy with that image, I can I pre-programmed copy, although you have to be careful because it only copies what you tell it to on here. So the masks aren't included. So if I want to include the masks, I can, and it will copy that instruction. So if I press copy now, it's copied those instructions. And I can move to the next image. And then I can press paste and it pastes what I've done already. Again, it needs some adjusting. So now I can paste it to the next photo. And there you can see it's pasted everything that I wanted, including the masks, which I can adjust by doing that as well, using the nozzles, using the knobs for adjusting the exposure, something like that. And then I deselect it and it's done. You'll note that the process is slower because I'm using masks. If I didn't use masks, it would be a lot quicker. But that's just a Lightroom feature. So again, I can just go through them, paste, brighten, go to the next one, paste, adjust as needed. Now you may be aware of the clicking that you may have heard through the video. And yes, I do find the buttons really annoying with the sound. If you're working with someone next to you or in the same room, they're gonna get really annoyed to, you know, 
makes quite a loud key press. So one improvement which would be good if the keys were padded, so when you press them, it looks like a normal keyboard, you can't really hear them. It would be also to be good to have the knobs feel a bit too loose. I would like more pressure and tension on them to get more accurate results. Again, I pre-program C1 to go back to the library. Use your exposure, do the highlights, add, some, add a bit of warmth. Then for cropping, I would use the mouse, and then press C1. And use the mouse again to crop in where I desire, and then I can copy that. And move on to the next one, post. So if the next photo doesn't need adjustment, you can easily keep on going like this to suit your needs. The Loop Deck has its own software which you can download for free. So you can choose your software that you want to use it with. Final Cut, Capture One, Lightroom, Photoshop. And then you can customize each button. So here's your control deck here with all the lights representing the ones you can pre-program. So you click on a button you want to expose and you can choose all these options. The main options, and this is for develop. So once you're in the develop module on Lightroom, all these buttons have different actions than you would if they were in the library. So most of the time they're going to be using develop mode. Then you can choose the option what you want to do. So I've programmed it to move next or previous photo in the library. P1, I've decided to use my preset retro that comes up every time. It would be good actually to have an extra column of buttons here for enter and back and things like that. The rest of them are quite good as they are. These are the common features that you would use for editing and they're really nice to use. When in crop mode, you can activate different buttons. Masking is an option, although I find using the mouse a lot easier for that. I would note that you can't program everything to every button. It's like I wanted to use these sliders, my preset opacity. So if I wanted my preset look on full, I would use that. But Unfortunately, you can't pre-program that button for Lightroom. So, like I was saying earlier, if you wanted to use the keyboard, I'd have to reach over and use it. And I've often hit something on here, and sometimes I don't even know what I've done. <laughs> also, one of the problems I discovered was that you have to program the copy button to change it to something else. So, on here, I've got it copy and Got, I had to choose a particular type of copy. When I first used it, it copied to the whole album without my knowing. So what I was doing, I was starting the album off. Let's say I started with this, I was happy with that. Then I'll press copy. I'll move to the next photo and paste it. It pasted to the whole album. So I got about 20 or 30 photos in, and I was like, wait a minute, why are they all changing? You have to be careful that in the library, they're not all selected. So if you go like that, and you press paste, it'll paste all to all of the photos, which you might want, I suppose, but when you're just doing it like I do, you only want it on one on one, so you have to be really careful to only select one photo at a time. So in summary, I do really enjoy using the Loop Deck Plus. And because I'm editing most day and night, then having something to change that up, to change the routine, to add a bit more interest. But would I recommend this to every photographer? No, I think that if you're used to the keyboard and mouse, you're still gonna be quicker doing it that way. It can be a quick workflow once you've programmed it in and got used to the whole ergonomics of it all. At first I was looking down all the time, but then you get used to it and you kind of get used to where all the layout is. So here are the Loop Deck consoles. So the Live one is 169, Loop Deck Live is 229, Loop Deck CT is 469. And that's quite a price increase from my Loop Deck, which I paid about 200 pounds for. Of course, you could get a cat which also adds to your creative input because they press random things. You don't know what they're going to do and it might activate things you never thought of doing before. So in summary, I really enjoyed using the Loop Deck Plus. There are some drawbacks such as the annoying clicking sound of the, it does get a bit annoying for myself and if there's anyone around. So they could do with more cushioning and the knobs could do with more tension for more precise work. 
and some more an extra strip of buttons there so that you can program for like enter and things like that. But overall it's a well-made device that looks good and feels good to use and it's fun and kind of brings a more tangible feel to something that's quite electronic and on a computer. Do I have any regrets in buying it? No, for the amount of editing I do, it's fun to use. I don't use it all the time. It does encourage me to edit more and for longer. Using a keyboard and mouse can get a bit annoying and fiddly. So I hope you've enjoyed the review and hope it's been helpful. Have you got this or do you like the look of it or maybe the other versions? And if they did make another version with those improvements I've mentioned, I would exchange it for that one and it would be an even more better experience.